Greetings, God bless everyone. I greet you all in the precious name of Jesus Christ. This is Pastor Mac Alexis. Uh, this is my first time back on Irie Store Radio for the new year 2023. Uh, it's been a while, but I'm back and I'm excited. I'm ready to share a word for this new year. Um, I think everyone who's listening right now, whether you're listening on YouTube or on the app, uh, however you're listening, share this message today. And I hope that this message is a blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm ready for this new year. I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready. I really have a word that I want to share, a word that's coming from my belly. So get ready, guys. Uh, today... We're going to uh, go into the word of God, but before we go into the word, let's just do a short prayer, uh, but get your Bibles ready. We're going to go into John chapter five. Uh, we're going to do a short prayer before we start. Spirit of the living God, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end. We thank you this new year, 2023, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ. This moment, Lord, let this word be a blessing, Lord. Let this word restore on i restore in the name of jesus christ this moment lord i just pray that you have your way in the name of jesus this moment lord i just pray that that today in the name of jesus christ for those who are seeking for you lord that they find you in the name of jesus christ let this word be a blessing to all those that hear it in the name of jesus christ let this word bring forth repentance in jesus name this moment, Lord, I just thank you for what you're doing and what you're continuing to do in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once again, God bless you all. We're going to go into the word of God in John chapter 5. Amen. John chapter 5. And I'm going to read. And we're going to read from verse 1 until verse 15. And the word of God says, after this, there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? The sick man answered him, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool. When the water is stirred up, but while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, rise up, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said to him, who was cured, it is the Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry your bed. He answered them, he who made me well said to me, take up your bed and walk. Then they asked him, who is the man who said to you, take up your bed and walk? But the one who was healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had withdrawn a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and he said to him, see, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. The man departed and told the Jews, it was Jesus who made him well. Amen. Um, so today, I wanted to share this word with everyone on I Restore. And in John chapter 5, we see something interesting going on. Uh, where a man was healed at the pool of Bethesda. 
But the Bible declares that this man, he had an infirmity for 38 years. And the Bible says in, in the area where the pool of Bethesda, uh, this is in Jerusalem. They said there, uh, it, it's by the Sheep Gate Pool. And it says there are five porches. The number five symbolizes the number, it symbolizes grace. The number five symbolizes grace. And the Bible declares in the multitude, there were a bunch of sick people in this area. And the people are divided. The blind are in one section. The lame are in one section. And the paralyzed are in one section. And then you have a bunch of sick people who are who, who are in a, in a different section. Now, the interesting about this is the Bible declares every time one year, there's an angel that comes down by the pool of Bethesda. And when the angel comes down, the angel stirs the water. And whoever jumps in the water, no matter what your condition is, you are made whole. So we have a man here for, for the Bible declares he has an infirmity. And he's been there 38 years. Could you imagine having a condition where you're stuck for 38 years? And remember, I told you the number five symbolizes grace. The number five symbolizes grace. And this man is about to receive grace from Jesus. Grace is something you receive that you didn't do anything for. So for 38 years, this man has been suffering with a sickness. Could you imagine waking up every day and you're suffering? And you have the opportunity to... All you have to do is jump into a pool when the angel comes down and you get, you get made well, you get healed, you get delivered, you get restored. That's all you have to do. Well, for 38 tries, this man missed his opportunity. But Jesus comes, my God. And when Jesus come, he's the problem solver. He resolves the issue. He resolves the solution. There may be some of you, you've been going through something and, and nothing works. You've tried to pray about it. You've tried to fast about it. You try to go to people about it, to pray for you about it. You've tried to get a prophecy about it. You've, you've had dreams about it, but nothing has resolved. But today I want to tell you that Jesus wants to come and resolve your situation. I don't know what it is because if an angel could come down and stir up some water and whoever falls in it, whatever type of issue you had, it, you would be cured from it. Well, I'm able to tell, I'm here to tell you today that your Redeemer, Jesus Christ, whatever issue you may have, you may be fighting through some financial situation. You may be fighting through an illness. You may be fighting through a condition and, and doctors are telling you, listen, there's no cure. There's no resolution to your problem. I want to tell you that Jesus has a solution for your problem. Jesus is able to grant grace. So this man for 38 years, he's suffering with a condition and nobody is able to help him. You would think some of the people would have been like, you know what? This guy has been here for 38 years. The Bible emphasizes for, for, for this 38 years, he's been there.
They could have been like, man, he's been here way longer than me. Let me let me give him, even if I don't push him and he don't get my spot, but let me give him a head start. Maybe after me, you know, he, he may get delivered. But it seems that nobody comes to help this man. The angel comes down year after year and nothing gets resolved for this man. Some of you, you may be, been have been praying for, for I don't know how God knows how long, but, but you, you, you might think there's no solution to your problem, but I want to tell you Jesus is coming. When Jesus arrives, man may not be able to help you. Uh, uh, you know, friends may not be able to help you. I don't know what it is. Somebody may not be able to help you, but Jesus is able to help you to resolve that situation that you've been going through, to resolve that depression, to resolve that anxiety, to resolve that stress, to resolve that financial problem to resolve that sickness because you've been going through this issue for way too long and you've started giving up hope but I want to tell you today this new year 2023 this is an hour of grace God wants to grant his people grace God wants to give you another chance this new year you may have started off you may have had a previous a rough 2022 but I want to give you hope for this new year 2023 three and tell you put your trust in God because when he appears I'm telling you he wants to resolve the situation he wants that problem to go praise the Lord he wants that situation to be out of your life in the name of Jesus Christ because for too long you've been crying out to him but today he wants to respond and grant you with grace so the Bible declares that Jesus comes and Jesus sees the man and he, he recognizes that he's been in this condition for a long time. My God. Some of you, Jesus know what you've been going through. He knows when you go to bed at night, you've been crying. You've been fighting that depression. You've been fighting that anxiety. You've been fighting suicidal ide uh, ide uh, suicidal thoughts you've been fighting praise the lord amen that situation in your in your family you've been fighting to get ahead in life jesus knows your situation jesus knows your problem because the bible declares that jesus saw he knew that this man has been in this condition for a long time praise the lord some of you may have thought that jesus has forgotten about you but i want to tell you he's not forgotten about you it's just like when the disciples they went on a boat and there was a storm that took place praise the lord the disciples started panicking but jesus was on the boat with them as 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 a storm arose praise the lord they started crying out but jesus was right there he let them go through the situation some situations you go through in life is just a test god is forming you in the midst of that situation god is restoring you in the midst of that situation somebody i want you to understand the word that i'm giving to you today praise the lord some of you god is just making a way for you in that situation you may have been in the situation for a long time but if you're going through a process where god wants to give you a testimony i wish somebody could understand the word i'm trying to give to you tonight tonight i'm giving you a prophetic word praise the lord hallelujah god wants to give you a testimony in jesus name so some of you you may be going through something and you think the lord's forgotten about you no the lord is here he knows you've been in that situation for a long time but he wants to come and resolve it he wants to come and be the problem solver. He wants to get you out of the situation because through the situation that you're going through, it's going to glorify the name of God. So Jesus clearly knows that this man has been in this condition. But 
what captures me in the text is Jesus asks this man a question in verse verse 6. He asks, after he says he knows this man has been in this condition for a long time, Jesus goes and he asks him a question. Jesus says, do you want to be made well? Can you believe this? I feel like this is an oxymoron. Jesus asks the man, do you want to be made well? Praise the Lord. What do you mean if I want to be made well? Because I don't know about you guys. When I'm suffering, when I'm going through pain, when I'm going through tribulations, when I'm going through problem, I want to get out of that situation. Praise the Lord. And I'm pretty sure all of you that are listening to me, none of y'all like to suffer. None of y'all want to go through a financial issue. None of you want to be sick. None of you want to be stressed out in your job. None of you want to, you know, go through a problem. Amen. Hallelujah. Where where you have to struggle to make ends meet. Praise the Lord. You you want your situation resolved quick in a hurry. Amen. Praise the Lord. Even though as a Christian, the, the Bible declares you have to go through trials and tribulation, but nobody wants to go through it. Praise the Lord. Even Jesus, as Jesus was suffering, amen, when he was being put up on the cross, even when he was about to die, he, 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 declared, he declared unto his father he said father if this be your will let this cup pass before me so that means jesus he didn't want to go through the suffering but he knew it was something that he had to go through now jesus comes around and he asks the man a question he says do you want to be made well he, he asked he literally asked the man a question And the man, he goes and he responds to Jesus. He says, sir, I don't have anyone to put me in the pool when the, when the angel comes down, when the angel comes and stirs up the water. I know all I got to do is jump in the water, but nobody wants to help me. And this is the problem. The Lord wants to make you well but we keep coming up with excuses praise the lord i believe the man he was in this condition for so long and he just adapted to the condition and some of us we've been in a condition for so long we've been in that depression for so long we've been having that anxiety for so long we've been going through that financial problem for so long we're so used to failing for so long and when they ask when jesus tells you listen i want to get you out of the situation we get so comfortable in the situation it's like we like being in the depression although yes you're saying listen i inside of you you know you don't want to be in it but you revert to the condition that you've been in for so long praise the lord and you've adapted to it you've made a bedroom hallelujah praise the lord you've made a bedroom for depression amen even though the Lord wants to heal you. You start coming up with excuses. You start saying, oh, it's a friend of mine. It's because I've been through this family issue. That's not what the Lord is asking you. He's asking you, do you want to be made well? Do you want to be restored? Some of us, the Lord is asking you right now, do you want to, me to change the circumstances in your life? Praise the Lord. Do you want me to change the situation in your life? Do do you want me to change the financial issue in your life? Do you want me to make the marriage whole again? Praise the Lord. He's not telling you what your husband did in the past. He's asking you, listen, I want to fix your marriage. Do you want me to fix the marriage? Don't go back to what happened in the past. What's in the past is in the past. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what the Lord was asking the man. But the man was reverting back and was making 
making excuses this year 2023 amen praise the lord it's no more excuses it's do you want to come out of your situation god is looking for people to be radical and say listen i'm coming out of my situation i'm coming out of this issue i'm coming out of this financial rut amen yes i had a financial issue but this new year the lord is changing my finances hallelujah amen my, i'm having problem in my family life i'm not gonna worry about what a family member did but i'm gonna resolve amen hallelujah i'm gonna come out my situation in the name of jesus christ praise the lord the lord asked the man a question he was not asking him for excuses and some of us god wants to restore your situation but we keep reverting back to excuses God asked the man a point blank question. He started to blame other people. It's people's fault that he didn't make get made well. And this is how we are. When we don't advance in life, we try to blame other people. Oh, so and so made me go do drugs. You decided to do it. Now own up to your, to your fault and say, I messed up, Lord. But yes, I want to be made whole. That's what the Lord was looking for the man from, from the man. He wanted him to answer, yes, I want to be made whole. Some of you, God, want to change certain circumstances in your life. But you have too much excuses. You have too much defense mechanisms. God is not asking you, listen, you know, who did, do you want to be made well? And some of us, we would have been come out of our situation, but we keep complaining. The man wanted to blame other people because he was in his condition for 38 years. And Jesus, look, although the man is complaining, my God, Jesus shows the man grace. Hallelujah. Instead of the Lord saying, man, I don't want to hear your complaints. Because sometimes somebody asks you just one question and you complain, complain and complain. This year, stop being a complainer. When you complain, it makes you take longer in the route. That's what happened to the children of Israel in the book of Exodus. As they came out of Egypt, you would think after all that God did for them, they wouldn't complain. But when they got a little thirsty in the route, they started saying, oh my, they started complaining and started blaming Moses. They started saying, oh, when we were in Egypt, we used to have good meat and all these things. And, 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 and a route that was supposed to take them 40 days ended up taking them 40 years. You see, when we don't want to take accountability for our past mistakes, we end up paying the consequences. Some of us, we put ourselves in certain situations. This year, we need to own up and say we messed up. A certain situations, I put myself in it. No, it's nobody's fault. I'm going to own up and I'm going to take accountability for what what I did, praise the Lord. But even though this man didn't take accountability, Jesus still pronounced the word. He still had, he still had grace and hallelujah. Today, I want to declare on somebody listening to me today. Hallelujah. You may have put yourself in a situation, but Jesus is telling you today, rise up, take your bed and get up and walk. Come out of that depression. Come out of that anxiety. Come out that poverty come out of that sin come out of your family situation come out hallelujah uh, out of that struggle come out of that family curse praise the lord hallelujah come out what of, of whatever situation that brings you down come out of your pain yes some of you you're responsible hallelujah for some of your situations but god in his grace god in his mercy today he's telling you take 
take up your bed, get up, rise, and come out of that sin. Hallelujah. Jesus, although the man is complaining, he has grace on him. My God. And I feel that this year is a year of grace. God wants to have grace on his people. My God, some of us, we fell off, we fell off, we fell off the path, but God is a God of grace. God is a God of mercy. Some of us, we did things that we weren't supposed to do. Some of us, we ended up places we shouldn't have been, but God is a God of grace. God is a God of mercy, my God. And he's telling you today, don't stay in your situation. Hallelujah. You may be comfortable in that situation, but God is telling you today, don't be comfortable in that situation. He wants to, he wants you to do better in life. He wants to provide you all the things that you lost in 2022. God wants to do something new in your life. Hallelujah. Some of you, you've been suffering in a condition for way too long, but God is telling you, yes, your condition may be bad, but don't be comfortable in that condition don't 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 make a bed hallelujah this man made a bed hallelujah and he got so comfortable that when the lord tried to deliver him he 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 was so used to the condition he was willing to stay but god in his grace god in his compassion he came to make a way for this man And the thing about it is, the man didn't even know Jesus. And Jesus still had grace on him. So the man, he ends up, he takes his bed, he gets up. He gets out of his condition. My God. Some of you, I'm prophesying today, God wants to, he, he's going to take you out of your condition, my God. He's going to grant you grace this 2023. Yes, I know you've been in that condition for too long. I know you've been crying in that condition. I know, amen, hallelujah, friends done left you while you've been in that condition. Family members left you while you were in that condition. You even had some church folk that left you in that condition but i want to tell you today hallelujah glory to god amen many many men even though everybody left you in your condition they left you for dead they left you and they thought you were gonna die in that condition but i have some good news for you today hallelujah god is going to remove you out of your circumstances the guy takes his bed and he gets up and he walks and he goes to the temple and Jesus finds him in the temple and Jesus has a message for him he said look you've been in the you've been in that condition for 38 years Although you was complaining, telling me, listen, man, so-and-so, my brother didn't put me, my sister didn't put me. Listen, I ain't want to hear all that. I just want to make you whole. I don't want to hear the complaints. He said, look, although you, 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 you wanted to blame, put the blame on other people. Look, I granted you grace. And he tells the man something. He tells them, sin no more, my God. You see what sin can do? So the man, the reason why he was in his condition was an issue of sin. Sin had him in prison for 38 years. There's certain conditions that we're in. You're in a prison. There's certain sickness that you have. Praise the Lord. It's, it's due to sin. 
Jesus tell him sin caused this issue. And even though he wanted to put the blame on other people, because when we do things, we try to blame other people. But this year, we need to own up to our mistakes. God said, even though he wanted to complain, look, I, I, I had grace on you. But he said, look, I made you whole, but don't sin no more. He said, if you sin again, something worse may fall on you, my God. God wants to remove you out of your condition. It may have been your fault. For all I know, it could have been someone else's fault. But whatever the case is, God wants to have grace and mercy upon you. Yes, you ended up paying the consequence, my God. But God said today, he wants to remove that filthy garment that Satan put on you. He don't want you to feel comfortable in it. He don't want you to grab your PJs, grab your covers and cover yourself, put on the dark, turn off the blinds. Nah, he wants you to get up and shake it off. Whoever, whether it was your fault, whether it was your friend's fault, today Jesus wants to make you whole. Sin put us in certain conditions. There's certain financial issues we have. It's, it's a sin problem. There's certain issues where you can't keep a job. It's a sin issue. There's certain people, every time you keep getting into accidents, every time you get a car, there's something that goes wrong. It's a sin issue. Your car keep breaking down. It's a sin issue. You keep having financial problems left and right. You get this fixed and then something else breaks. It's a sin issue. But this year, God wants to have grace on you. God had grace on this man. After 38 years, he was suffering. But he ran into Jesus. How many of you want to run into Jesus and he'll take away your sin? He told the man, Sin no more. He said, I don't want something worse to come upon you. And after God has grace upon you, don't return to the act that you used to do. Don't return to the sinful nature that you used to, you used to obey to. But now start walking like a man of God, like a woman of God, like a servant of God. Somebody who's, who wants to please the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He told the man, sin no more so something worse don't fall upon you. Today, how many of you are tired of your condition? Come to Jesus. He's the problem solver. The same way he had grace upon this man. He told them, get up, take your bed. Go, go, go away. This place is not, it, it, you shouldn't be in this place. But there is a condition. He said, go. And sin no more. Let something worse fall upon you. Let's pray I restore.
Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I just thank you for your grace and your mercy. I thank you for your compassion and I thank you, Father, for all that you're doing. I thank you this moment, Lord, for every single person listening to me today in the name of Jesus Christ. This moment, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, there are some people listening to me. They're in the same condition as this man who had an infirmity for 38 years. Some may have a sickness. Some may have a financial issue. Some may have a curse in their family. Some may have marital issues. Some may have financial issues. Some father, they may have a car issue that they, they don't know what's the problem with their car, but every time they get it fixed, there's something, Lord, that's, that's, that it's causing them to spend money that, that they don't understand why. Some of them, they have the spirit of confusion, Lord. They just confuse as to what they need to do in life. But today, Lord, I know you're a God of grace. I know you're a God of mercy. I know that you're a God of compassion, Lord. I know, God, that you're able to sanctify, wash, purify in the name of Jesus Christ. Well, Father, the same way you had grace upon this man in John chapter 5, after 38 years, Lord, he was waiting for the pool to stir. But, Father, he could never find anyone to assist him, Lord. But one day you came, Father. You asked him, does he want to to be made well father although he came with excuses but you 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 didn't you didn't take his excuses you told him get up and be removed from his infirmity lord and he obeyed to your voice today father in the name of jesus christ for those who are listening who are in a sinful situation and they don't know which way lord this moment lord amen amen to leave their situation give them the strength give them the faith Lord, that they just may get up and leave whatever lifestyle, leave whatever sin that was causing them to suffer, leave whatever a many, many men situation behind, Lord, that caused them to go down in the name of Jesus Christ. This moment, Father God, I just pray that you renew a steadfast spirit in every within everyone who's listening today in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, the same way you made this man whole, make us whole in Jesus' name. Father, this moment after you remove us from our sin, the same way you warned the man, you told him, go and sin no more. Father, for those who are listening, who may have an addiction that they're battling and they don't know how to come out of it, Father, help them that they don't sin no more so something worse don't fall upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. I just thank you, Lord, because I know you're restoring in this, in this, and I restore today in the name of Jesus Christ. This moment, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.